This is a video on indexed family of sets, or indexed families of sets. So here's kind of the general setup. Let's let S be a set. Think of that as like your universal set. And let's say you've got a bunch of subsets of S. And the way that I've chosen to denote these so far is just A1, A2, up through AN. So you've noticed that I've colored those numbers down there and that, you know, that last one's a letter. I'm aware of that. So what are those? Well, those numbers are examples of what are called indices. The indices that we choose, those are called an indexing set. So to refer back to my example above, A1, A2 through AN, the indexing set is I equals just the numbers one through N, whatever N is. So we're just going to use those as our labels for how we're gonna to refer to these particular sets. So if you think about it, that list A1 through AN, each, each of the A's is a subset of S. And remember, a subset of S is an element of the power set of S. So like if I look at A1 individually, whoops, that's not a highlighter. If I look at A1 individually, that's an element of the power set of S. So if I take a bunch of elements, then that list is technically a subset of the power set of S. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of formalize how we refer to this list of subsets here. Technically, that's a subset of the power set. And we'll think about it as... Well, we'll write that subset in this way. So here's the notation for it. You usually just see your squiggly brackets, the uh, sets that you're referring to, but now there is this notion that, that that index there is gonna change somehow. So there's lots of subsets perhaps in this uh, collection here. I'm saying the word collection, a synonym for that is subset or a bunch of subsets, and a synonym for collection is family as well. So what's the definition of this notation that everybody's supposed to get used to? So if you haven't seen this before either, remember the little colon in front of the equals means we're about to do a definition. So this is defined to be just the set that consists of your A sub I's, where each I gets to go through what we called your indexing set. So that's kind of the formal uh, introduction to, uh, we call this an index family uh, of subsets of S. So again, we're just gonna take our list of subsets that we're interested in, we're gonna put our squiggly brackets around it, and there should be some kind of convention perhaps as to uh, how you've chosen to denote your subsets here. In other words, what your indexing is, what your index set is. So that is our index family of subsets of S. So again, we're just taking a bunch of subsets and considering those. So what do these do for us? Why are these useful? You know, maybe they seem a little bit confusing. We'll do an example in a little bit, but indexing sets make it convenient to do uh, unions and intersections and operations with sets. Kind of like sigma notation made it convenient to like, you know, add a whole bunch of numbers together or like the giant pi symbol makes it convenient to multiply a whole bunch of numbers together. So let me give you an example. If I have some subsets, say A1 through AN, just like above, what if I wanted to take the union of all of those? I mean, one option you have is just to do A1, union, A2, union, and do you know some dots, which indicate that, yeah, he keeps going forever until you get to the last one. But I mean, that's a little bit cumbersome. It's a little bit long-winded. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna use this notion of, or this really just new notation is all it is, uh, for an indexed family of sets. We're gonna have our index set looks like one through n again, right? I'm just looking at how did we choose to denote these here. And so if I wanted to talk about that union, all I need to do is write one big union sign in front. What people typically do is write where do the indices live? So the indices live in the set I of AI. So again, this symbol right here, I want you to compare it to this. The bottom is much more compact, much more readable and easy to think about. And it's a lot less to write too, which you should be interested in doing. Efficiency is a cool thing. And so anyway, that is a much more convenient way to say, oh, just take the union of all the AIs. Cool. You could do the same thing with intersections as well. So again, just like sigma notation helped us clean up, not writing a bunch of plus signs everywhere. Index sets make it a little easier to do um, operations to perhaps lots of sets at one time. Now, indexing sets don't have to be counting numbers. In some way, they're like kind of the ones we might run into most often when we're actually doing um, some kind of math and introductory classes, but you'll see as you go further in math that you could have uh, different types of indexing sets, but uh, maybe generally any set can really be an indexing set. So there's no rhyme or reason for why we'll call this an indexing set versus another thing. It all really just depends on what you're doing. And so just let me give you an example of something you might do in a math class or you might think about and something that we'll do in topology a little bit later on. 
is let's say we're thinking about like college algebra. So we're just thinking about the real line. Uh, and I want to describe all quote open intervals. So when I say open, I mean that from like the college algebra perspective where I don't include the endpoints. So I've got parentheses on the left and parentheses on the right when I'm thinking about interval notation. So that's all I mean by open. Again, if you're in a topology class, then you're gonna actually rigorously define what it means to be open and you'll see that that's consistent with what you learn in college algebra. Anyway, just describe all the open intervals that are centered at zero. So zero on the number line, think of that. But I wanna make sure that like the radius is rational. So some positive rational number. Uh, I wanna just describe all such open intervals as an index family of sets. So if you had to describe those to somebody, just write down what the description is in math symbols, what would that look like? And so an index family of sets is perhaps the most convenient way to do that. So what we're gonna do is, well, I want rational radius. So, and again, radius kind of suggests it's a positive number. So I'm gonna say Q plus, sometimes that's referred to as just the set of all positive rational numbers. Now what we're gonna do is, well, for each positive rational number, let's define the set A sub R to be the following my open interval from minus r to r. So of course zero's in there, zero's the center, right? So you see little r serves as the radius. And uh, what have I implicitly done here? I'm defining a set, and how I'm defining that set, it's kind of based on what that index is. So it's kind of natural to say that, oh, that set depends on that index r in some way. And that's again the upshot of why you might use an index. It's a convenient way to label stuff. So uh, what am I gonna do then? then if I just take the set of all such things called a sub r, or again, you just gotta make sure somebody knows that r is a positive rational number, then this would be a compact way to denote that family of uh, open intervals. So that's the answer to that little question. And then now just in purple below, you know, what does that allow us to do? Well, maybe some things that you might wanna do is, okay, if you've got all these open intervals that look like from minus r to r, what's the union of all of those? And so if you take the union of all of those things, what you might think about is, well, each real number should be in at least one of those. In fact, each real number is in uh, maybe quite a few of those. And so the union of all of them then, you'd have every real number. And then similarly, uh, what if you took the intersection of all of these subsets here and you think about, well, I mean, uh, definitely find a real number that's uh, maybe in one, but is, is not in another one, right? So it's impossible to find a real number that's in perhaps all of these at one time. So remember, that's the thing with intersections too. The intersection here, that means it's gotta be in every single one of these sets here. And so think about it, there's no real number that's in every single one of those. You can always go a little bit smaller. You can get a little closer to zero so that you miss that real number. Think about that. Anyway, that is a quick intro to just trying to get comfortable with what is meant by an indexed family of sets.